I'm Greg Slapole, and I work for a company called Everfy. So I'm the VP of Quality Engineering at Everfy, and I'm responsible for the platform and all the course testing um, that we provide for uh, the company. Our scale of our um, overall, we have over 150 courses, and our audience from a um, K-12 world and others are around 7 million uh, learners on a daily basis. Um, and so the impact is pretty high from the standpoint of the, the courses um, that we provide. We, as of today, we have over 150 courses. We release every two weeks of those uh, courses that we um, kind of build and test. And it's really cr critical for us in general because we're a very UI-centric um, platform. And so the courses are actually, you know, a student can take those on an actual desktop or their mobile device itself. So it's really important that we actually can test that from a functional standpoint, but also making sure that it's visually intact and because of all the different resolutions and all the different devices out there. From the user experience at Everfy, as you think about the course, is very visually, and so it's really critical for us to make sure that if we're providing education for a workplace and making sure that a learner, that when they're going through a course, our courses average probably about 75 pages per course, so it really just de determines um, we need to make sure it's visually intact and making sure that we can you know, move from one page to the next page or it's like all intact in the sense of visually, but also making sure that everything is displaying as expectations of that particular course. So the user experience is really critical for us, but we have over 2,000 customers that use the Everfy products today. And we have an, an average around 7 million learners that are using all of our courses through our platform. When I joined Everfy three years ago, uh, so I was brought in to provide this digital transformation in Everfy. And so for me, understanding the impact from a visual standpoint from courses and everything, overlooking how we were doing before and how, where we need to move in the future. And everything was manually tested at the time, and that resulted in many hours of testing a course. So if you think about that course, it could have an average of 75 pages. It could take you hours to get through a course, and then you can easily miss those issues um, as you're manually testing it. So part of that process as I was coming in, the challenge is how can we speed up the actual development process when we have so many courses we're trying to deliver on on every two week cycle, right? But I also had previous experience from my previous job where I've used Apple Tools in the past and so I knew that this would be a perfect fit for Everfy because we're a very visual type of like content and we, I knew that bringing Apple Tools in will allow us to actually excel that speed to the market much faster and also feel very confident what we're actually testing because it's really important that the course is intact the way it should be. I would say um, my experience over the years, it really just you know kind of depend initially of like um, when I joined Everfy, the first part is like, what type of continuous integration pipeline do you have established today? And we're using a tool called Circle CI, which we actually leverage also as our testing grid. So it really simplified in the sense of like, kind of pushing everything up to Circle CI and say, hey, I need to deploy a node. I need to run this on Chrome. But after I run that particular test in Chrome, then I'm able to actually then push out the Apple tools to to all the different configurations if I want to run against different browsers or different resolutions for that. And so the speed of that was really fast for us because we're talking about maybe less than a week, we was able to onboard the actual like POC and kind of prove the like the actual the return and investment of actually bringing Apple tools into the actual fold of things. One of the advantages of making this onboarding of Apple tools was kind of looking at their actual ultra fast grid. It allowed us to actually scale out our courses across different devices, um, also browsers and different resolutions within you know less than minutes and maybe even seconds in the sense of like testing components to actually the course itself. So. You know, when you kind of look back, Circle, Circle CI was allowing us to run the test at a very low level, but then we was able to scale it out and then burst it out into all these different permutations of the course. What we actually would be able to look at analytics and understand from our learners or our customers of what actual devices they're actually using to allow this to actually have a more robust coverage in our actual test suite. So the advantages of using Apple Tools and where we were coming from is Apple Tools will really allow us to move at speed because we knew one, we we're gonna kinda of get this source of truth of every single page of our actual course itself. And when you're doing it manually, a manual tester, you know, they're kind of walking through this at a very slow pace between 60 to 90 minutes. And so the return on investment where I can literally take a screenshot of every single page of our course takes seconds. And so 
One of the advantages what we've kind of moved from is like you're talking about 60 to 90 minutes to where we can run AppliTools tests in less than five minutes of a particular course itself. And there's also the thing where, you know, you want to actually create this test. And we've also over, I would say not over engineered, but we've engineered using model-based testing. And so we're able to read our schema files of how, how they build out courses and actually generate AppliTools tests on the fly within less than 90 seconds. If they make a change in the application of like, hey, I want to add a new page on module three, that actually speeds that up. And so, Apple Tools allows you to onboard things really quickly, and it also allows you to construct it if I want to take a page or a particular region. And then, you know, the, the actual like savings on that overall is like you're talking about thousands and thousands of hours every sprint. So, one of the things, if you ever kind of look at how I approach things, is about the shift left mentality. And so, when we've basically generated these tests for our courses, or if we've been kind of like hand cranking the ones for our platform, one of the big advantages of us having this test suite that is very robust is our strategy of execution is around executing on an uh, in the dev environment, the staging environment, and also in production. So we kind of know the source of truth as it's going through the development life cycle. And so you're not able to really do that type of testing when you're in the manual world. You're actually getting faster feedback to the actual developers on that. But the other advantage that we have saw from the investment of this overall is as you start it earlier into the process and the communication, you're bringing the business analysts, you're bringing the UX designers into the conversation itself, and they actually understand what the application looks like. So you're catching bugs much earlier in the process and saving yourself hundreds or thousands of dollars because you're finding these things really early in the process. So we're doing sprints every two weeks. Um, so you're looking at roughly about 26 uh, sprints for the year and you're running these tests on a daily basis, right? And um, from our course standpoint, it actually runs a little differently too, where it's saving us. We're actually generating tests by doing targeted testing. So every commit that they're pushing, we're actually testing that commit also on a daily basis or multiple times during the day also. To quantify in the sense of like how we're saving, you know, we have 26 sprints throughout the year and when we've kind of moved into um, automated testing with Apple Tools, it's allowed us to save thousands and thousands of dollars simply because we were able to simplify the testing generation but also the execution to get that feedback much faster as if rather having a human to where they have sitting down there and looking at those um, results. So, you know, as being a customer with Apple Tools and doing some comparison between other tools out there in the market, you know, there's a lot of other tools out there that can be way cheaper um, in the sense of the budget, but that, that cheaper that cheaper solution doesn't provide like the AI to what AI, uh, Apple Tools actually provides. And Apple Tools also is like on the cutting edge of finding the tools that fi basically do root cause analysis much faster. And some of these other tools don't have that. So if you can actually have a root cause analysis why this failed, and then the developer can actually actually see that really quickly. You're saving yourself a lot of time, but also money because the tool is providing all this analysis on every single screenshot that is provided. And so there's a lot of solutions out there, but my recommendation is when you look at, you know, top of the class, Apple Tools actually provides that for you and others, you know, all your customers and learners out there. Um, I love Apple Tools for a, a, a couple of reasons. Uh, one, it does, you know, they're always cutting edge and always trying to innovate to be the best you know, out there on the market. But I think the most important piece of it is it actually pri provides this inventory of your system um, to how the, the source of truth of what it will look like out in the wild. And it really brings out other players into the organization into the actual testing results. And I've always tried to bring our like UX designers into the conversation. And so they're able to kind of see what the source of truth looks like right now. And then we can make a decision. So like having that tool that allows us to expand our communication beyond the QA team to all the, really the whole entire team is like really beneficial um, from that standpoint because it provides a lot of information for them to digest. For when it comes to our tooling side of things, and so we've used some various technologies that kind of is an extension of Apple tools. So um, we're using a tool called Test Modeler, it allows us to model well our system, but all, model well our courses. And then we were using a tool called Cypress. And so how you leverage those two itself is I'm able to use um, Test Modeler to model out the system and generate the test based on a particular change. So if I change a course component, I'm able to generate that test 
that generates Cypress test code and Apple, to, uh, Apple Tools code, and I can run that within you know seconds after an actual change that is happening in the application. And how does that actually make a difference in, in the whole world of the ecosystem um, around development is after I'm able to generate and um, test that really quickly, it provides this communication channel downstream um, to everybody to where it sends out notifications to everybody uh, through Slack to say, hey, we've just executed a new visual test. It allows the UX designers to kind of go in there if it's, it shows that there's an actual difference and they can actually determine, is this the new expected behavior or it's an actual bug in the application. So allowing us to close that loop at the very end to where we actually have all the stakeholders in at the, with the actual test results allows us to actually make faster decisions. Apple Tools is an extension to all of our other testing tools out there. And the one benefit it allows us to do is to provide faster feedback to, into the communication channels using your dashboards to where we can use it as a team communication of saying, is this expected behavior? Or is this actually a bug? And within minutes, we can have that conversation based on the tooling we use with Apple Tools. On a daily basis, when tests are executed, one of the biggest stakeholders that provide the most impact to all of our like testing results and actually understanding the source of truth is our UX designers. They're heavily involved every day, understanding what's being tested because they want to know what's going to be pushed to out to be out in the wild. And they're able to have that conversation with us and also the developers where they have might have been some misunderstanding with requirements and they're able to see that much earlier in the pipeline. With us releasing uh, 26 times a year and we have a we average around, you know, 10 courses every sprint, which is around 75 pages. You're looking at, you know, between 25 to $50,000 probably every sprint itself. So you're looking over a million dollars for the whole entire year from a return investment, kind of moving from a manual side of testing of our courses to actually running continuous automation using visual testing.